Hello, fellow foragers and foragers in the making. My name is Brogan and I'll be your guide for today's episode of Foraging for Beginners. Let's start with the roots of foraging and why people choose to do it. The history of foraging starts with a group of people that is typically forgotten and discredited, the indigenous peoples. The indigenous peoples of BC have been foraging for just thousands of years, collecting different types and species of various fungi and just greens to help feed their communities. Others, like myself, just do it out of pure enjoyment. I just love to connect with nature and just really see what this province has to offer. Um, regardless of your reason, many people can learn to like and enjoy foraging like myself. So join me and I'll open your eyes to the world of foraging. Here I am in Langley's own McLaughlin Park Ravine. Yeah. Uh, this is home to many edible species, including the invasive Himalayan blackberry bushes. Um, foraging invasive species is actually very beneficial to the ecosystem and helps contribute to lowering the numbers of invasive species. Invasive species like the blackberry bushes here um, take over many of the native species. The blackberry bushes are actually incredibly amazing at reproducing and they're really fast. In the summer, like from the size that they are now, they will triple in size and yeah, they're really, they're just really bad. So picking the berries, which is how they seed, it's actually very kind of helps with the environment. So and they're delicious. Like many things from If possible, depending on your resources and where your berries are, and where the bushes are growing, you can remove the bushes, although it is very time consuming and it does have to be done basically annually. So that's that's only if you like own the property or like, yeah, basically if you own the property. <laughs> Um, dandelions. Uh, they're commonly known as wheat. Like you see them, the reeds, everyone knows what they are. But actually before, I mean, they start turn into the, like the puffs, you can eat almost everything. You can eat the greens, the roots, and the flowers before they turn into the little puffs. They're all edible. So um, they're very delicious, except you just got to make sure that there is no um, weed killer on them so don't go around to other people's gardens or start stealing their weeds or just make sure that just make sure that there's no weed killer on it um, you can use dandelion greens and salads the very easy way to incorporate into your meals or if you want to put more effort you can dry the roots and the leaves and make them into a dandelion tea and if you're like myself and you have little rodent friends or rabbits, I have guinea pigs, uh, you can feed them your dandelions. They, they would love them. And the last um, species that I will touch upon is stinging nettle. Um, don't let the name fool you. It, I mean, many people know that like if you touch it, it's very irritating, itchy, it hurts. Um, but you can eat them. You just have to take the proper precautions to do so. So making sure that you wear uh, gardening gloves or have and have a good knife, like or a pair of scissors, like this. I have a, a knife. <laughs> um, just make sure you have something like that for yourself and wear gloves, and that's how you would collect it. But when you go to prepare the food, make sure that I mean wash all your forged food obviously wash all your vegetables but um, um, you boil when you boil it it actually causes the hairs on the nettle to go limp and that is actually what causes the stinging so you can consume them after 
you boil them or however you cook them. People often cook them like spinach, so you can use them in very many ways, like you use them pasta and just, I don't know, however you would use spinach. And I will be moving on to topic, very broad topic of mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms are typically what people think of when they think of foraging, which is for a good reason. They add a lot of depth to a meal and they're very delicious. And yeah, but the thing is, they, I mean, as many people know, there is lots of inedible and poisonous mushrooms. So it is very important to know how to identify your mushrooms. Like I said before, do not take it if you do not know what it is, especially, especially for mushrooms. Um, I would recommend El Yellow Eleanor's video series on mushroom identification and harvesting, and I will actually link that in the description. Uh, it's very good for beginners, and it helps you, you know, learn a little bit in about the mushroom anatomy. It is very important to know how a mushroom looks because that is how you're able to distinguish it from the different, whether it has gills or pores, or the cap, if it has, like, depending on the cap, like, there's so many different things about it that I won't go into depth in this video but you should definitely check out her video about it on the same topic of mushrooms little brown mushrooms are people assume that since mushrooms are not the brightly colored ones that you can eat them that is definitely not true whatsoever there is so many different types of little brown mushrooms and they look so similar to many people so that it's just not true. And there's also like quite a few, like the lobster mushroom and chanterelles that are pretty bright and chicken in the woods. They're all like brightly colored mushrooms that many people might think that you can't eat, but they are highly edible and they're very delicious. But yeah, you just gotta make sure you know what you are collecting because that is the most important thing. One of the most important things about foraging is identification. Just some tips that I would have overall for people who are beginning to forage. When you forage, just take, just when you go out, only look for a couple of species, like two or three, maybe four, because otherwise you're going to get overwhelmed by everything and then you may, you're more likely to confuse things with each other because you don't want to go out and grab like some berries and mushrooms and then take them home and then try to identify them from there because it's quite hard to do that because identifying the species really depends on the environment it depends on what kind of trees they're growing around what kind of soil like what what it's growing out of is it growing out of soil is it growing out of gravel is it growing out of sand a tree stump it depends it all depends so it's very important so just stick to a couple um the next um tip i would have is i'd recommend getting a good knife like the one I have here I just was relatively relatively cheap um, not just like a little knife store I'm too scared to get one of the, like the spring-loaded ones but of course do what you want um, when collecting just collect what you need don't go into the forest and start taking everything you see because often you won't even use it all and you're just taking it away from the species of the animals, the birds, that depend on that and that's part of their diet. So, and my another tip is don't be like me and try to forage a bunch in the winter because there's not much winter forageables and also a lot of things will be dead and yeah, just it's just it's not a pleasant experience and then it's cold and there's barely anything there so I just don't recommend you can do I would recommend researching in the winter so you plan on what you want to look for in the spring like fiddleheads come come along in spring so that might be something you want to look into where to go foraging it really depends you have to research on the individual species because you don't necessarily have to go to a forest to forage you can just walk out into your garden you can literally go to a park and find a bunch of stuff to eat it really depends on what you're looking for but if you are going into like a forest or some i don't know if you're going out just make sure that you are not foraging in a provincial park or a national park because that is illegal in bc so just make sure not to do that i recommend buying books specific to your region like 
I would buy um, a mushrooms like a guide to mushrooms for the Pacific Northwest because I live in BC because if you buy a journal books they're often very bulky and you don't need all that information it's just a big book and often they leave out species too because they don't put every single species typically they don't buy every single species in there so just buy specific books yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe this has furthered your interest into foraging and um i hope you learned something and yeah i'll recommend some channels below to look further into because i can't just go on and on because i could be here for hours just teaching about each little niche um species but yeah thank you for watching this video and yeah bye so if you really want